Hi, this is John Leslie, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to implement all four configurations of SAFE, the Scaled Agile Framework, in Favro. We'll start with Essential SAFE, then move to Large Solution, to Portfolio SAFE, and finally to Full SAFE. I'll also be showing you how to achieve full traceability from portfolio level down to Large Solution, to Program, to Team, and all the way back up again. Let's start with Essential SAFE. We'll begin at the team level and move up to a single Agile release train or art at the program level. In this example, we'll be standing up a relatively simple three-team Agile release train. As you can see here in Favreau, we have a collection for each team, team one, team two, and team three. A collection in Favreau simply being an aggregation of backlogs. You can have multiple backlogs in a collection and boards. You can also have multiple boards in a collection. Here at the team level for team one, we simply have one team backlog and a team scrum board. When we look at the team one backlog, you can see that it's being fed from the agile release train level with features and program epics. Thanks to relations, we can see exactly where they're coming from, the art one backlog, which exists in its own agile release train dashboard collection, which we'll get to in a bit. Now, if we expand each one of these features, you can see that the team has broken them down into user stories. Thanks to the hierarchical nature of Favreau's backlogs, you can see how things like weightest shortest job first roll up to an average WSJF, and estimation and points roll up to a total sum for the feature itself, which can also be seen at the Agile release train level, also known as the program level. If we take a look at this particular team scrum board, you can see that they can configure this any way they choose, adding columns, maybe even adding lanes, setting card limits, and maybe even defining custom workflows. When they're ready to commit work from the backlog to the scrum board, they simply drag and drop it like so. Here you can see that this card representing this particular user story now exists in both places. It's here in the to-do column of the scrum board, and it's also still here in the backlog, where it can be tracked via relations. Now as the team is working on everything that they committed to during an iteration, the card will eventually be pulled from to-do to doing. Once development is done, It'll be pulled into QA review. You can see uh, that via some of the workflow rules, we've automatically assigned the embedded QA person on this team and automatically tagged it with a QA review tag for visibility purposes. Now, once the QA review is passed, it'll eventually be pulled into the product owner review. You can see the product owner was also automatically assigned and a PO review tag was placed on the card, again, for visibility. When the PO approves this particular user story, it'll eventually move to done. Now to track progress during any particular iteration, there are charts built directly into the board, burn down chart, cumulative flow chart, control chart. If we take a look at the burn down chart, you can see when this team is expected to complete the work that they've committed to. Okay, let's finish up with the team level. So in our example, with our three team art, team two and team three would have similar collections with boards and backlogs configured exactly the way they'd like to work. All three teams are being fed by the program level and we'll take a look at this program level agile release train one. Here you can see this is a collection of all the backlogs for all of the teams that make up this art, that make up this agile release train and all of their boards. So these are live backlogs, these are live boards. As cards are moving on these team level boards, they're the same boards and backlogs that exist at the team level. So you'll see cards moving in real time, you'll see updates happening in the backlog in real time as the teams are working on these various user stories and features. In addition to the team backlogs and boards, You can see here that we also have the program level backlog for this particular art. So we have capabilities, which are broken down into enabler features and functional features. We also have various program epics. All of this is being fed 
from the team level up. So in our particular example here, send real time status, which we saw at the team level, the, as that was broken down into user stories, the estimation, for example, is fed up to the program level. Same thing for the status, so we know it's in progress at the team level, and we see that here at the program level. We also have a program level Kanban for this particular Agile release train, broken down into funnel, analyzing backlog, implementing, validating on staging, deploying to production, and releasing. Now this, again, can be configured any way you choose to configure it, and it allows you to see all of your features, your program epics, where they are in the current flow, and as well as control that flow based on uh, priority order, weighted shortest job first order. Now, as of the new All Teams expansion, boards can be seen in three different ways, thanks to this three-way toggle. So we're currently looking at the Kanban view. We can switch it to the Sheets board view, where you can look at those same cards, those same features and epics in this example in a different way. And the third toggle is a roadmap timeline view where you can look at the same cards on a timeline and configure their dates just by dragging and dropping. Also here at the program level is for this particular art, a program increment roadmap where we have it broken down to the next three program increments or PIs. Again, you can see this in three different ways. You can see it on Kanban board as we're looking at it here. You can see it in a sheets view, and you can see it on a timeline roadmap view. So in summary, here at the program level, we have all the roadmaps, boards of the various teams, the program Kanban, the program backlog, and also the team backlogs that make up this art. So we have everything in a single collection here at this program level dashboard that makes up this agile release train. Now for the second safe configuration, large solution. We've seen the team level. We've seen multiple teams of teams at the program level. And now what happens when you have multiple agile release trains working on a very large solution, making up a solution train? This is where large solution safe comes into play. For the safe large solution configuration, to this example, we've added a second agile release train with its various teams that make up that second Agile release train. We've also added a solution train or large solution level collection, which we'll look at in a second. So first thing to notice is that to each of the Agile release train or program level collections, we've added this solution train backlog. This has our various business epics, which are broken down into capabilities. Those capabilities, such as GPS, are feeding the art level backlogs. So here you can simply drag and drop, which I've already done, GPS, down to the art level backlog, which is in turn, as we've already seen, broken down into features. Now let's take a look at the large solution level collection, solution train one in this example, where we have that same solution train backlog. This is its home. This is where it would be initially configured. All the business epics that make up this large solution again, broken down into capabilities. We also have the two now, two art backlogs that make up this large solution, that make up this solution train. We have the solution train Kanban, very similar to the program level Kanban, just now multiple arts feeding into it. And here, instead of features and program level epics, we instead see capabilities moving from funnel all the way through to releasing and eventually done. Here at the large solution level, we also have the solution train roadmap. Here, this is broken down. We see our capabilities first by quarter for the first year, and then by halves, and then by full years. Now again, this can also be seen in three different views, three different toggles, the Kanban view, the Sheets view, and the timeline roadmap view. So once again, for the large solution, which is arts of arts instead of teams and teams for the program level, we have everything we need in a single collection to track at the next level up. 
We now move to the portfolio configuration, where we have teams, maybe a single program and a single art, or multiple programs with single arts in each one. Moving up to the portfolio level, where we're driving the actual business. This is where true business agility happens. For the safe portfolio configuration, we've simplified the example back down to a single agile release train with its three agile teams. We've also added a portfolio level collection. This is where executive leadership will drive the entire enterprise towards business agility. It starts with strategic themes. The strategic themes backlog contains all of the strategies and goals that will help drive the business towards future profitability. As well as overall theme status, we can see links to business epics that will further drill down to capabilities, program epics, features, eventually down to user stories. It's these strategic themes that influence and drive all levels of the SAFE framework. Here in the portfolio collection, we also have the portfolio canvas, which helps define and align the portfolio's value streams and solutions to the goals and strategic themes of the entire enterprise. In this example, this collection also contains a portfolio backlog, the portfolio backlog is broken down into new business opportunities, enablers, marketplace changes, mergers and acquisitions, problems with existing solutions, and cost savings. New business opportunities is broken down into business epics. Enablers are broken down into enabler epics. Since these are further broken down at the various other levels of the SAFE framework, we can see the rollups of estimation, we can see overall epic status, and we can also follow links and relations down to those various levels to track further progress. Also here at this level, we have the portfolio Kanban, where we can visualize business epics flowing from funnel through review, analysis, backlog, implementation, all the way through live and retrospective. Also included in this example, to help see progress, we have the single Agile release train backlog, so we don't have to navigate to that level's collection. And we also have that single arts program increment roadmap here in this collection. Essentially everything we need to drive the overall business. And now the fourth and final safe configuration, the full safe configuration, we've seen multiple teams feeding into arts at the program level, multiple arts fitting into large solutions, and the entire business being driven by the portfolio level. For the fourth and final safe configuration, the full safe configuration in Favreau, we've brought together everything we've seen in the previous examples. So we have our portfolio level collection, including the solution train backlog and the solution train roadmap. We have the solution train level dashboard collection, with everything that's needed to drive a large solution made up of multiple arts. We have the multiple agile release train level collection dashboards, as well as the various team level collections. All right, the best way to wrap this up is to follow a block strategic theme all the way from the portfolio level down to its root cause impediment, which just happens to be in this example at the team level. So we'll go all the way from portfolio level down to the team level to track this down. Okay, it all starts here. Enter autonomous vehicle market. We can see that this strategic theme is currently blocked. Uh, via the Favreau attachments, we can see that this is being driven by create autonomous vehicle, which just happens to be in the portfolio backlog. We have that right here. If we open that up, we can see under new business opportunities that create autonomous vehicle, that business epic is blocked. If we click on the card, and go to our relations. We can follow this down to the solution train backlog where this exists in more detail. And we can see that create autonomous vehicle is broken down into these various capabilities, some in development, some selected, but GPS is currently blocked. So let's see what's going on with GPS. A GPS, we can see that that is being driven now at the art level. So we can go to this art one backlog. We can see that GPS 
is blocked here in the art backlog and that's broken down into these various features and we can see that real-time status happens to be the blocker so let's click on send real-time status and we can see via its relations that this is being worked on by art team one and it's in the art team one backlog so let's go there to their collection now we've gone all the way from the portfolio level down to the team level and we can see that send real-time status is indeed blocked it's broken down into these user stories and as an administrator i want to see global positioning for all customers so that i can respond if necessary we can see that this is blocked we can see that it's currently blocked by an external supplier and we can see that the product owner maybe the scrum master in this case is already on it and this dependency is soon to be resolved now just as we were able to follow that all the way from portfolio level down to the team level in this full safe configuration the same thing could be done going up the framework from the team level up to the portfolio level to see what's driving user stories at all levels of the organization i hope you now see how the flexibility of favro can be used to drive not just teams not just arts at the program level, not even just large solutions at the solution train level, but the entire business from the portfolio level. Thanks and good luck with Fabra.